Hello everyone, it's Patrick here. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a Google Maps scraper using Zero Work Creator app, a powerful web scraping and web automation tool that doesn't require any coding. Let's say we want to scrape the names and href links of businesses from a Google Maps search for barber shops in Detroit. We'll start by setting up our search query on Google Maps. Therefore, we enter Barbershops in Detroit into the search bar. Next, we either press the Enter key or click on the magnifying glass icon to initiate the search. After performing the search, a list of results is displayed, with each item representing a barbershop located in Detroit. Our next step is to identify the CSS selector that will allow us to extract the business name and href link for each entry. To do this, we open the developer tools by right-clicking on one of the items and selecting Inspect. This action opens the dev tools for us to proceed. When I click the Inspect icon on the upper left in dev tools, I can hover over the element on the page and view the DOM tree and CSS code. The DOM tree, also known as the Document Object Model tree, is a hierarchical representation of the HTML or XML structure of a web page. Each element in the tree corresponds to a node that can be accessed and manipulated using programming languages such as JavaScript, CSS, or by modifying the HTML structure itself. The DOM tree is visible in the left panel, while the CSS code can be seen in the Styles tab on the far right. As I hover over the item list, I notice that the class name next to a tag is consistently labeled H, F, P, and so on. This means we can use it as a selector to target this particular element on the page. The class name appears to be a generic one, which may potentially change in the future. However, for our specific situation, we can still utilize it. Now let's analyze this section and the underlying HTML code. The anchor element represents a link, and the href attribute contains the URL for the destination page. The aria label attribute provides an accessible label for the link, which in this case contains the business name. Let's copy the CSS selector of this node to evaluate its potential usefulness for creating a custom CSS selector later on. In DevTools, you can right-click on the node and select Copy from the Context menu. Then click on Copy Selector to copy the selector to the clipboard. You can also use the shortcut Ctrl plus F to open a search field at the bottom of DevTools. This allows you to search for a string, selector, or XPath within the DOM or to test a selector. Press Ctrl plus V to paste the content from the clipboard. As you can see, the given CSS selector is not very helpful. It appears to be quite complex and contains multiple levels of nested elements. Generic class and ID names are used, which makes it difficult to determine the specific purpose of each element. Next, let's open a note-taking application where we can paste the selectors and analyze them in more detail. For Windows users, we can use Notepad. To open Notepad on Windows, press Windows key plus R to open the Run dialog, type Notepad, and hit Enter. Mac users can use Text Edit as an alternative. Additionally, there are several other text editing options available, such as Microsoft Word, Google Docs, LibreOffice Writer, and more. These are just a few examples of alternative applications you can use. To paste the content from the clipboard, press Ctrl Pause V. Then, navigate back to Google Maps. Click on the Inspect icon located in the upper left corner of DevTools. Next, hover over the second item in the list and left-click on it. This action will highlight the node in DevTools. Right-click on the node to open a context menu. Hover over the menu option Copy and select Copy Selector. Now, return to the previously opened Notepad application. Finally, paste the selector by using Ctrl plus V. In Google Maps, click on the Inspect icon once again, located in the upper left corner of DevTools. Then, hover over the third item in the list and left-click on it. This will highlight the node in DevTools. 
Right-click on the node to open a context menu. Hover over the menu option Copy and select Copy Selector. Let's return to the notepad and paste the selector using Ctrl plus V. We now have three selectors that were copied from a list. The selectors of items in the list are numbered incrementally. However, we notice that in this case, the numbering starts from 3 instead of 1, and then it skips two numbers before continuing. To summarize, the first item in the list starts at position 3 and then increments by 2. Let's remember this observation as it will be significant when we replace the incremental number with a loop index for the purpose of iterating through a list. However, we will discuss this further at a later time. Just to remind you, this is a special case. In most cases, the incremental number starts with 1 and doesn't skip any numbers. As mentioned earlier, we can create a custom selector using the previously discovered class name. To do this, click on the class name and press the Enter key. The class name will be highlighted, allowing you to copy it using Ctrl plus C. Afterward, press Ctrl plus F to return to the search field at the bottom. Type A and then a left square bracket. Type class, followed by an asterisk equals sign and a single quote. Press Ctrl plus V to paste the previously copied class name, which is labeled with H, F, P, X, Z, C. Complete the selector by writing a single quote and then a right square bracket. The node gets highlighted in the DOM tree. The Elements panel selects the first matching result in the DOM tree and rolls it into view in the viewport. By default, this happens as you type. At the bottom, next to the search field, you can observe the number of matches obtained for this search string. You can navigate through the matches using the arrow keys. The down arrow key allows you to search for the next match, while the up arrow key lets you find the previous match. If you wish, we can incorporate the ARIA label attribute. However, it is not obligatory. I am demonstrating this for illustrative purposes to showcase how to combine multiple attributes. To add the ARIA label attribute without any spaces, simply type a left square bracket, followed by the attribute name ARIA hyphen label, and then a right square bracket. To select the text, use the keyboard shortcut Ctrl plus A. Then, copy it to the clipboard by pressing Ctrl plus C. You can optionally use the console tab in the dev tools to verify the validity of the selector. This step allows you to evaluate and validate the selector if needed. Keep in mind that the Elements panel has some downsides compared to the Console panel. In the Elements panel, all match strings are included in the count. Additionally, the Elements panel only evaluates the selectors without validating them. If a locator is invalid, it will not return any results. It's up to you and your approach whether you want to always validate or occasionally skip this additional step. Personally, I primarily use the console tab for validating complex selectors. But in this case, I will show you how to evaluate the selector. Switch to the console tab in the dev tools. Type two dollar signs, then an opening parenthesis and a closing parenthesis. Press the left arrow key once. Then type a quotation mark and press Ctrl plus V to paste the text from the clipboard. Add another quotation mark. Press Enter. The CSS selector will be evaluated. The console execution results should be checked. If there are any matching elements, they will be returned as a list. Otherwise, if no elements are matched, an empty list will be displayed. Log in to the Zero Work Creator app and you will be directed to the dashboard of Zero Work. It is now time to create a new taskbot. Simply click on the plus button to begin creating a new taskbot. This action will open a new window displaying the workspace. Next, let's proceed with creating a new data table. To do this, click on the plus icon next to data tables and select create a new data table from the drop down menu. In the first field, please provide a title for the data table. For instance, let's name it Google Maps Data Table. However, you have the freedom to choose any name you prefer. Afterward, proceed to the drop-down menu and select the desired data table type. 
click on Create a Data Table with Custom Columns to proceed. In the field, enter the desired name for the first column. For example, let's name it Business Name. Then click on Add Another Column. In the newly opened field, enter the name hreflink. Afterward, click on the button labeled Create Data Table. The newly created data table will appear. If necessary, you can make corrections or add new columns to the data table. To close this window, simply click on the X button located on the top left corner. Alternatively, you can press the Escape key as a shortcut to achieve the same result. Let's continue building the taskbot using the building blocks on the right side of the workspace. Start by clicking on the Open Link building block and dragging it into the workspace. Then return to the Google Maps browser tab and copy the URL link. Paste the link into the Enter Link field and save it. The next building block is the Safe Web Elements. Click on the search field in the Dev Tools and press Ctrl plus A to highlight the string. Copy it by pressing Ctrl plus C and go back to the browser tab with the taskbot. Use Ctrl plus V to paste the selector into the selector field. Save it as a custom attribute, in this case, enter aria-label as the attribute. Save the information to the Google Maps data table that we previously created. Choose business name as the column by selecting it from the drop-down menu. Then click on the Save button to save the block and close the window. Once again, drag a Save Web Element building block into the workspace. Use the same selector as before, but this time choose to save it as a link. Save this block to the Google Maps data table, selecting the column name as href link. Finally, click on the Save button to confirm and close the window. By default, the taskbot handles scrolling automatically. However, during my tests with Google Maps, I noticed that the scrolling feature did not work properly. To ensure that the focus is correctly positioned on the desired area of the page, I utilize the Click Web Element Building Block. This enables me to set the focus specifically on the header with the label Results. But first we need the CSS selector, so let's go back to the Chrome tab with Google Maps. When using DevTools, I click on the Inspect icon to switch to Inspect Mode. The icon will be highlighted in blue to indicate that the mode is active. Afterwards, I proceed by clicking on the Results header in the DevTools, causing the corresponding node to be highlighted. Following that, I click on the class name and press Enter, then use the key combination Ctrl plus C to copy the attribute value to the clipboard. To navigate to the search field at the bottom, I press Ctrl plus F. In the search field, I enter the tag name H1, followed by a left square bracket. Next, I type class, followed by an asterisk equals sign and a single quote. Finally, I press Ctrl plus V to paste the previously copied class name, which is labeled as font title large. There are two values in this attribute, but we will ignore the second one as it appears to be generic. To remove it, we press the backspace key multiple times. Afterwards, we complete the selector by adding a single quote and a right square bracket. On the right side, you will notice that there is only one match. This is advantageous because it indicates that we have a unique selector. We highlight the selector using Ctrl plus A and copy it to the clipboard with Ctrl plus C. In this case, we skip evaluating it in the DevTools console. Instead, we proceed directly to the next step and return to the browser tab with the taskbot. Add a building block called Click Web Element. Click on the Enter Selector field and press Ctrl plus V to add the text from the clipboard. Click Save. To add notes to the building block, click on the icon located in the bottom right corner. Provide a note such as, set focus on the web element for scrolling purposes. Add the building block labeled Keyboard Action. Press the arrow down key twice to simulate scrolling down. Finally, click Save. To iterate over the entries of the search results list, we need to add a loop function. 
Therefore, we include the start repeat building block to the workspace. For the loop type, choose standard. Now you can input the number of repetitions. As a test, I will enter 10. To iterate over a list, we need to include a loop index in our selectors. I make the necessary update by clicking on each save web element building block and add the syntax double greater than nth equal open curly brace loop underscore index comma one close curly brace at the end of the selector. By adding double greater than nth equal open curly brace loop underscore index comma one close curly brace to our selectors in zero work, we can select elements based on their position in a loop starting from the second position. Additionally, in zero work, the double greater than sign is used as a filter and is placed at the end of a selector. It is important to note that the nth equal method associated with the double greater than signs starts counting from zero. This means that zero corresponds to the first element in the list, one corresponds to the second element, and so on. In this case, I have chosen to start from the second position because the first entry is mostly an advertisement, and I can skip it. If we know exactly where the increment takes place, the traditional way to write the CSS selectors is as follows. div nth child, opening curly brace, loop index comma two, comma two, closing curly brace, greater than sign, a, opening square bracket, aria hyphen label, closing square bracket, opening square bracket, class, asterisk, equals single quote, h, f, p, x, z, c, single quote, closing square bracket. The syntax opening curly brace, loop index comma two, comma two, closing curly brace, means that every time the loop index is incremented, it will skip two elements. To understand how to use loop index syntax to save lists and explore the various available methods, please refer to the documentation of the Zero Work Creator app. Let's go back to the Google Maps Browser tab. There is one more thing left to do before we start the taskbot. Make sure to add your cookies using the Edit This Cookie browser extension. To do this, click on the Edit This Cookie icon. A pop-up window will appear, then click on the Export tab. The cookies will be copied to the clipboard. Now, let's return to the Zero Work Creator Browser tab. Click on the Settings icon located in the upper right corner. Click inside the empty Cookies field and press Ctrl plus V to paste the cookies from the clipboard. Close the Settings window by clicking on the X button in the upper right corner. The window will close and the cookies will be saved. Make sure all the building blocks are connected. Now we can initiate the taskbot by clicking on the green play button. The taskbot will start and scrape the selectors we have chosen. In the end, we will obtain a data table with the desired information. Congratulations on successfully creating a Google Maps scraper. For more detailed information, please refer to the description. I hope you enjoyed following along with the video and hopefully you learned something new. Until next time, take care and see you soon.